Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I would like to talk to you about school and I'd like to talk to you about how I went from a 2.9 undergraduate GPA to a 3.7 graduate cumulative GPA. Number one is to get organized so you're gonna need a planner or something of the sort. Um, I would take my planner and I would write down any important dates um, when my exams were, when classes were starting, whether I had a project due, write each and everything down so that you have no reason to forget. And if you're like me who likes to procrastinate, I would say lie to yourself in your planner. Write that an exam is, um, well write that a project is due earlier than it should be. I usually tell myself, oh this project is due a week before it's actually due so I make sure that I'm getting my information in on time. Failure to prepare is preparation to fail. Tip number two, your syllabus is your Bible. So everything the professor is looking for or will assign during the school year is in your syllabus. So you want to use that to your advantage. I like to use my syllabus as an automatic grade book so I know what I need to do for the year how much exams are worth, how much um, participation points is worth. Let's say attendance is worth 20% of your grade. That means you need to show up because we need every point that we can. So use your syllabus to your advantage as a way to stay on top of things and stay prepared for class. You can also use your syllabus to know what the professor will be teaching. That way you get a chance to have you know like a little briefing of whatever the class is going to be about so if you see something coming up in the curriculum that you know you've had problems with in the past you either have the opportunity to study it a little bit more talk to your professor about it or just know that I really need to crack down during this part of the semester because this is something that I need to stay on top of step number three find friends find at least two to three friends or people in your classes that you can talk to about when assignments are due if you're struggling with something even vent to them or just get advice you need resources you need to have people who are helping you through the course it's a lot harder to do things on your own if I told you you had to carry an extremely large boulder would you want to do it by yourself or with other people the boulder would be the weight of education you need friends you need people to help you along the way you need peers you need mentors you need tutors TAs just find those people that are going to help you get through the course I have friends that remind me when assignments are due I have friends that um, tell me how they've found ways to memorize tough com concepts but just remember you don't have to do it on your own so why would you step four talk to your professors now you don't have to be a suck up and say oh i've read your work on blah 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 you're the most amazing person in the world but talk to your professor if you are a student athlete which i was let them know who you are let them know that you will be missing class on these days but you would also very much like to succeed in the course um, let them know if you are struggling with a specific concept i personally like to review my exam with um, my professors every time I get my grade whether it's good whether it's not what I want it to be I review it with them just make sure your professor actually knows who you are and when you come up to them at the end of the year needing a letter of recommendation or something they know who you are they've interacted with you because they are people make sure in class if you are confused ask questions don't sit there and like I would do this I was a dummy and I would sit there and not understand things and I'd be like oh um I don't understand it because I didn't read the textbook so I guess I'll go and teach myself no you're paying 40 plus thousand dollars a year or however much your college tuition costs for them to teach you so make them earn that money ask the professor questions I had a class where I was sitting there as biology of cancer and I was confused for a good portion of the time so if the professor was going too fast I would ask her to slow down if there was something that I didn't understand I'd ask a question and she'd be like oh good question at the end of the semester she asked me to be her TA because she thought I was so interested in the class now the class was interesting but I wasn't asking questions because I was very interested I was asking questions because I was confused but professors like that they like that you are there to to actually learn and not just to get a grade you want to understand the material because if you're in a field like science things build on one another so you want to make sure that you understand every step of the way because the more you know as a foundation the easier the concepts are at the end 
for example, you get up to calculus class, right? But you didn't pay attention in a class when you were learning how to multiply. All those things build up and you need that basic knowledge to be able to succeed at a higher level. Tip number five, see all of the material at least three times. So what you want to do is you want to try to skim the lecture before class starts. So I would go through and just look at the title of each slide for the presentation that day. That way you kind of have an idea, you're priming your brain on what you're going to be learning that day. Um, the second time I would see the material is in class, which is passive learning, but you're seeing it and you're also hearing it. And then the third time would be when you study. So studying, you can either go through the book and read through concepts that you have a harder time with, but don't just read through your notes. That's not going to be helpful. You want to actively learn. So to actively learn, it would make more sense to make quizzes out of your notes and fill out the problems on your quiz that you made up for yourself and then review hardcore the things that you didn't get right. Because by reviewing what you already do know, you're not really helping yourself. You're just making yourself feel good, which is nice, but it's not going to help you. When it comes to studying and making quizzes, I like to take a plain piece of paper, fold it in half, write questions on one side, write answers on the other side. So I'll write down all the questions that I have and then I'll try to answer it as if, as if I was going through a quiz. If I can answer it, I don't put it on the next piece of paper. If I cannot answer it, then I highlight it and put it on the next page. So let's say I start out with 50 terms that I need to know or 50 explanations. Um, if I get half of them right, then 25 go on the next and then 10 and then 5. That way as you get closer to the exam time, you have less to study and you can just write down those concepts that for some reason aren't sticking. So once you have those concepts that you're having a little bit of trouble with, you can email the professor, you can look up YouTube videos, YouTube will be your very best friend. Look up YouTube videos, try to get it simplified into a five minute blurb or just to get a broader or more specific view, whichever way that you need it for you to be able to digest it mentally. So number six, study actively. That goes off of what I was just saying about making quizzes. You want to be able to um, test your knowledge before you get to the exam. I don't know if many people can relate but for me I would take an exam and then feel like I knew more after the exam than I did before the exam which makes absolutely no sense. You don't want to go into an exam blind. So you're going to want to test yourself before you get to the actual test so you know what you don't know. Right? So you can do that either by doing the paper fold method, like I told you, you can create study groups. Um, I know for my biochemistry course, I had a study group and we would all go in. There were usually four lectures, um, four lectures or chapters on the exam. So what we would do is we had a group of four, we would have each person teach the lecture. And I would, I would usually choose the lecture that I did not understand, that I found the hardest to teach because that way if I made a mistake or got something wrong my peers could correct me before I got to the exam and I also had to study it that much harder because I knew I would be teaching it to other people. Tip number seven, when you're studying make sure you take a study break. It's proven that um, your brain can only focus for about 30 to 45 minutes. That's pretty much as long as your attention span is. So you need to take a study break. Um, a lot of people like to use the Pomodoro technique where you have 30 minutes on, 5 minutes off, 30 minutes on, 5 minutes off, 30 minutes on, and then take a longer 15, 30 minute break. In between, you want to get up, stretch, you know, refresh your body, refresh your mind. Um, studies have shown that increase in cortisol levels, which is a hormone that um, that is produced when you are stressed out, is correlated with decreased memory. So you're basically going in a vicious cycle if you're not taking break, breaks. So you're studying, you're getting stressed out, cortisol increases, memory decreases, then you're stressed out because you can't remember anything, cortisol increases, memory decreases. Basically, it's just one big circle of failure. Um, and you don't want that. You want to use your time effectively and you want to be productive when you do study. So make sure to be kind to yourself and take breaks. Everyone needs a break.
tip number eight ask for help if you need help ask for it that's why people are there that's why they're paying these people money to be there everyone is literally there for you and that's something that i did not realize i felt like i was always making excuses of why i can do things but i was literally in one of the worst situations possible when i was in my undergraduate um experience so ask for help when you need it when you get a project complete it early take it back to your professor and have them look at it and give you recommendations on what to fix they can't give you anything less than an a if they reviewed your project themselves i had a professor one time um we had a take-home worksheet and i did the worksheet terribly confused and i was like okay what if i just asked and he worked through the problem with me and i got a hundred because how could i not it was a biochemistry problem worksheet and he he didn't give me the answers but we worked through it together so i knew my answers were right ask for help whether you're asking a ta whether you're asking a friend whether you're asking a professor ask for help get the help that you need number nine find a stress relief you have to relieve your stress i already said it about cortisol levels and the effect it has on memory um you need to give yourself a break you need to take some time aside away from studying so that you can appreciate everything else um if you are living a sedentary lifestyle if you're not eating if you're not healthy that's not going to help with your brain function so yes you can work hard when you're in school when you're in the library when but when you get out you need to either go back to doing the art that you like wind down with netflix whatever you like to do exercise you know get some endorphins going just make sure you have a way to relieve your your stress after a long day of studying last but not least this is specifically for first generation college students believe in yourself believe that you deserve to be there just as much as everyone else your money is just as good as everyone else's even if you're on scholarship even if you are on um, EOF and some kind of financial assistance you're there for a reason so everything is worth putting effort into you know your professors need to put effort into you they need to teach you what you need to know everyone should be there for you and that's the purpose of your college education you're there to better yourself so you deserve to be there as much as anyone else and if someone tells you otherwise you need to punch them in the face okay don't punch people in the face because of legal reasons but if someone tries to make you feel like you are less than make sure that you affirm you are there for a reason you're there to get an education just like everyone else and know that you are worth it uh also don't forget to like comment and subscribe on this video let me know if you would like to see other videos like it um if this was helpful if it wasn't helpful if you want me to get more specific in how i plan um i just want to be able to help that next college student who is in the same position because I had no idea of the resources that I had um, that I should have had how I could have been treated how I shouldn't have let myself be treated so um, make sure that you are doing a lot of research there are a lot of sources that you can use YouTube is a good source for learning things Khan Academy um, just make sure you're asking and trying to figure out what you don't know because that's the most dangerous thing I didn't know what I didn't know so there was no way to really get help you know it's like what do you need help with oh i don't know well can't help you then but yeah like comment and subscribe to my channel and see you next time